Welcome to this video on tympanometry. Before we begin, consider the following questions. How do pressure gradients affect the transmission of sound into the middle ear? How does a tympanometer work? What is shown on a tympanogram trace? What are the different traces as characterized by the Jurga classification? And what is continuous tympanometry and how can this be used? Tympanometry provides an indirect measure of middle ear function specifically assessing the pressure within the middle ear and the movement of the tympanic membrane. Under normal conditions, pressure in the middle ear matches the atmospheric pressure, and this balance is regulated by the eustachian tube and the mucosal gas exchange system. When these pressures are equal, the tympanic membrane remains in its physiologically optimal position, allowing efficient sound transmission into the middle ear. However, when there is a pressure mismatch between the middle ear and the environment, the tympanic membrane is displaced from its physiological position, reducing its efficiency in transmitting sound and increasing the amount of sound energy reflected back into the ear canal. A tympanometer consists of a probe that is inserted into the external auditory canal. This probe contains a speaker that presents a continuous tone, a microphone that detects sound energy reflected from the tympanic membrane, and an air pump that varies the pressure in the ear canal from negative through to atmospheric and positive pressure. As pressure in the ear canal is varied, the tympanic membrane is displaced, altering the amount of sound energy that enters the middle ear. The tympanometer measures the compliance of the tympanic membrane as the pressure sweeps from negative to positive values, using the amount of sound energy detected by its microphone to estimate the amount of sound energy admitted into the middle ear. The results of tympanometry are plotted on a graph known as a tympanogram where the x-axis represents the pressure measured in decapascals and the y-axis measures the compliance or admittance of the tympanic membrane. This is the amount of sound energy admitted into the middle ear. The tympanogram also provides an estimate of the ear canal volume by measuring the volume of air medial to the tip of the probe. If the tympanic membrane is perforated, the ear canal volume estimation will include the volume of both the ear canal and the middle ear space. A normal ear canal volume is typically between 0.6 to 2.2 cm cubed, and so an ECV higher than this is suggestive of a tympanic membrane perforation. Tympanograms often feature a box, which represents the area within which a peak would be expected for a normative group of patients. If the peak of the trace is found outside of this box, this suggests an abnormal result. Other information you may find on a tympanogram is the laterality of the test, the sweep direction and sweep speed, the tympanic peak pressure, and the frequency of the tone used, which is usually 226 Hz. The Jurga classification describes different shapes of tympanograms, which together with the ear canal volume and audiometric findings can help diagnose middle ear pathology. Traces can be classified as type A, B or C, each with their own subtypes. A type A trace is a normal result where the peak compliance occurs at zero decapascals, which is atmospheric pressure, with a sharp decrease on either side, indicating normal middle ear pressure and mobility of the tympanic membrane. A type AD, or deep trace, represents a higher than normal peak amplitude, indicating an overly mobile tympanic membrane, potentially due to ossicular chain disruption, or a thin, hypermobile tympanic membrane. In this case, the peak compliance is still at zero decapascals, though the amplitude of the peak is abnormally high over 1.5 milliliters. In contrast, a type AS or shallow trace indicates a low amplitude peak with reduced tympanic membrane mobility. This may occur due to tympanic membrane thickening from scarring or meringosclerosis or potentially from stiffening of the acicular chain. A type B trace is a flat tympanogram indicating no discernible peak in compliance. This could be due to middle ear effusion tympanic membrane perforation, or potentially occlusive wax. If fluid is present behind the tympanic membrane, its movement is restricted, resulting in no variation in compliance with pressure changes. The ear canal volume in these cases is usually normal. When the tympanic membrane is perforated, the air pump is unable to create a pressure gradient between the ear canal and the middle ear, resulting in a flat trace. In this case, the ear canal volume will be larger than normal, reflecting both the ear canal and the middle ear volumes. If a plug of wax is occluding the external auditory canal, a flat trace will also occur, but the ECV will be abnormally small. 
Typically, wax is removed prior to tympanometry, and so this situation should not occur in clinical practice. A type C trace occurs when the middle ear pressure is lower than atmospheric pressure. This results usually from eustachian tube dysfunction, which prevents adequate ventilation of the middle ear. The tympanic membrane only achieves its peak compliance when the probe applies negative pressure to match the middle ear pressure. Depending on where the peak occurs, type C traces are subdivided into C1 and C2, reflecting varying degrees of negative pressure. Continuous tympanometry is an extended form of traditional tympanometry in which the compliance of the tympanic membrane is continuously monitored over a longer period, often while the patient performs certain maneuvers such as swallowing, yawning or performing a valsalva maneuver. In a normative population there should be some fluctuation in compliance as pressure changes induced by these movements are conducted to the middle ear. However, if there is eustachian tube dysfunction, there would be no fluctuation in middle ear compliance. This could also be used to identify a patchless eustachian tube, where the eustachian tube remains abnormally open, leading to constant pressure fluctuations even at rest, which can be observed in continuous tympanometry. Continuous tympanometry, however, is not used widely and is limited by its sensitivity and specificity in identifying or ruling out these conditions. I hope you found this video to be useful. I'd be grateful for your feedback in the comment section below and let us know what you'd like us to cover next.